get that feedback from the audience and yeah as soon as the crowd is like throwing money at me and having a good time I don't want to stop you know <laughs> whore I'm just kidding uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens sometimes too so I <laughs> whoa you know it's okay they got me pegged right <laughs> now we're bringing pegging into this whole crap <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. I'm Josh, and today my guest is known as the Human Jukebox. If you've been in this town for a while and you like seeing live music, you've probably seen him. And if you are an original musician, uh, you've probably been to one of the showcases that he runs. His shows feature music from rock and roll of all genres and eras, funk, country, and western, R&B, blues, top 40, hip-hop, and more, all by request. Uh, he's been attracted the attention from the likes of Rick Springfield, John Oates, Glenn Fry. Michael Eisner, Quincy Jones, and Cool with Cool in the Gang. And he has been quoted as saying, if I'm blessed and cursed to play in a cover band for the rest of my life, then we're going to be the best cover band in Vegas. Please welcome to the show, frontman for the House of R band, House of R. Say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, you don't have to introduce yourself, because I just did. Be here. And you don't have to tell them what you did, because I just did. But, um, now you play guitar and sing. I do. Yeah. And your bread and butter is covers. It is, but like that's my, I'm like a, that's the, day job. the versatility I think is like uh, all the stuff, you know, right. that's the day job, the cover, the cover thing. Right. But you are, uh, you've started, you've done originals for a little while now, right? Yeah. So when I first moved to Vegas, um, that's all I wanted to do was play original music. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember early on, um, I met a booking agent really nice he took me and uh, a couple guys out to lunch and we were considering getting involved in cover music because i had a crummy day job that i hated yeah yeah and uh i remember him saying like if you do this he was like you're not gonna write as much music <laughs> and he was like you'll you'll see and i was like wow that guy he doesn't know me i was so mad <laughs> afterwards so i was young you know like a kid yeah, yeah uh but he was right like once once it became like a regular thing you know, I, I didn't even want to look at my guitar after playing music four to six hours every day. Been there, done that, you know? yeah. So, but I did continue to keep writing as it happened over the years. <laughs> yep. You know, so. I, and, and, and I'm glad you did, because now you're here. Thank you. Uh, let, stick around, because at the end of this interview, Hal's going to be performing how many songs? Right, it's up to you. I'm, I the can... record is seven from Joey Hines. Seven? Joey Hines did seven? Yes, he's, he, some on guitar, some on piano. Wow. Um, but uh, uh, Kitty Green has gone, has literally switched from sax to piano at, in the middle of the song. What? So that was creative uh, camera work. I can't really beat that. I no. I, pro I'm somewhere around there. Maybe, right. maybe right. a little less. Right on. Well, less. stick around. You get treated to some of his original stuff. Yeah. Because YouTube awesome. doesn't like covers. No. Yes. So, okay with me. Um, YouTube doesn't even like original sometimes. I still get copyright claims. I'm like, they gave me the music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're on camera saying they're going to perform it, their music. Anyway. Um, so, officially, welcome to the show. Cheers. Clink. Thank you. Mm. How about that merch? Yummy. So, uh, before we get into things, special thank you to the patrons. Thank you very much, my Patreon patrons. Um, you're amazing, and hopefully you're enjoying the patron-only content, uh, Two Brains and One Bottle. Uh, it's a podcast I do with uh, my former drummer, Sean Flume, who's in Kansas City now. Different guy. Uh, we talked on camera about somebody else. And um, it is a fun, one-hour, unedited, whatever we want to talk about. Like, I, I bring some content, or some, uh, some topics, maybe a dad joke, and, mm -hmm. and, we, and we, we both are drinking whiskey. And we, awesome. we just talk about all the stuff. And we also answer listener questions. We um, have a great time. I mean, I've, I've never laughed so much than I, when I do these podcasts with Sean. So if you're not a patron on Patreon, consider, you know, it'll help out the channel. It'll help out the local scene. Uh, I've talked ad nauseum about what I'm going to do with the money that uh, I get from this channel 
to help out the local scene. I'm going to put on a showcase for all the Room 6 alumni. That's awesome. I'm going to pay them to play. Oh, that's beautiful. Yep, you get to put your merch out oh, there. Man. You get exposed to uh, audiences and it, that you never would normally get to play with. These showcases are going to be amazing, but also it's uh, you know going to go to hopefully making the videos better as well. I got plans, but that can't happen without your help because I have a wife and child and a day job, and you know these things. Know these things. This all takes time and, and money. Um, but enough of that. On to the interview. First of all, the time of recording, you are 13 days away from your birthday, sir. I am. By the time this posts, you know, it'll man. probably be past your birthday. Oh my gosh. Mm. So you're what, 29? We'll say I'm 29 and a half. Nice. <laughs> no, yeah, it's I'm I'm about to be 40, which is you you don't look crazy. it. Crazy, thank you. I'm 49 and and <laughs> I'm feeling 50 crochet. Thank you, man. It is a weird feeling, like every 10 years. Yeah. You know, you feel like, what has happened to the last 10 years? I don't even know. Yeah, I feel like um, Patton Oswalt said it best. And he's like, you shouldn't get a birthday every year. After, you know, you should get a birthday, you know, like after 13. 13, you're officially a teenager, okay? <laughs> then nothing until you're 18. Like, I'm oh, 14, <laughs> so what? You know, get a job. But once you hit 18, Boom! Your 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 18th birthday. You, yeah, yeah. You, you can you know you can buy own a gun. <laughs> you can join the military, and then and then after that, nothing until 21. Then and drink. And 20. 30, 40, 50, uh, 60. But the best part is like, if you can make it to 100, you can legally commit murder with your hand. <laughs> but you have to use like your hands because if you can't fight off a hundred year old person, you didn't. You, What's you the didn't point? Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you deserve it. He has a great bit though, and, and but I was like, yeah, yeah. Who, who cares about your twenty seventh birthday? Yeah. Well, being forty nine, it matter. It, it yeah. you care, you care, you start really caring. It um, does feel weird. I'm yes. feeling it pretty. You're feeling like. And what hurts? What, what hurts my cause is, my wife and child, want this. They really they want me to have a great big bushy beard. Oh. I when I met my wife, I was smooth shaven. Yeah. I had. Um, Recently cut off my hair that was down in the middle of my back. I was back. To, I, I was clean cut. I was presentable to your parents, and and then uh, suddenly it was you know. Can you try? What if you don't don't shave all of it? You have marshmallow in your beard, and I was like, no, I don't. And I was like, oh, that was the first time that I noticed fluff beard. Oh no, what's where'd that come from? Oh, you know, yeah, and, and let me tell you, the the mustache trim is essential if you don't want to taste your food yeah. twice. You know. For All right, sure. moving on. The tangent. Sorry, <laughs> rabbit holes. So, talk talk me through moving from hometown Philly. You're a Philly yeah, boy to Virginia to Ohio to Massachusetts <laughs> to Vegas. How, were you, were you were you an army brat or what? Yeah, Air Force. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a long story, but like my parents had a business when I was like <clears throat> real little, like one one years old, two years old. Mm -hmm. and they sold their business and we moved to Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington D.C., like Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. They got this big house and you know it was like I don't want to say like we had we we were doing okay, you know what I mean, for a while, for a time. Yeah. Then everything kind of fell apart, like right after my little brother was born. It's not his fault, <laughs> you know. Like, Thanks, but, bro. <laughs> but uh, but right after he was born, you know, my parents split up, and their finances oh. were all over the place, and uh, we ended up uh, moving into like a townhouse. So like literally, like <laughs> fifth grade for me was weird because winter break, you know, I left one school, and then I started a new school, at, right at the end of after winter break which is weird for in right. fifth grade you know so basically but, you did like the second half of the year yeah but that was like <coughs> that was like uh, training <laughs> for, for what i was about to hit you know my mm. mom met a really nice guy and he was in the air force he was a lawyer in the air force um, oh so jag so, yep he was a jag just like the movie except instead of tom cruise picture like Bob Saget or <laughs> something like he's, much he's more relatable. Old, he's, he's the oldest MF for a cardigan sweater. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, almost immediately, as soon as they got married, the the Air Force started moving us around. So we we were in Virginia for like eleven years, and then as soon as my mom remarried my stepdad, they sent us to Beaver Creek, Ohio. 
Beaver Creek, Ohio. Was it to be totally honest? Like I kind of, I kind of loved, ended up loving it, you right. know, because it was very small town and it was beautiful, you know, like a lot of greenery. You forget that here, you know, like how much yeah. I love that and the seasons and stuff. Uh, but it was also kind of small town, mm -hmm. you know, um, which I had never really been around that because it was very like metropolitan and like Northern Virginia, all like up and coming and busy. And this was a little more chill, right. you know. Um, but I, I loved it and we were there until uh, my junior year of high school. And as that year was ending, they the Air Force said, well, we want you guys to go to <clears throat> Framingham, Massachusetts now. Yeah, I saw that name and I'm like, who named, what, what is that name? So Framingham is like, it's right outside of Boston. And, uh, is it Amish? They, no, no, it's not Amish. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> but um, it is very, very metropolitan, like more than Northern Virginia was. It was, uh, they actually called it Little Brazil because there's so many Portuguese speaking people that live in Framingham. Oh, and it was like culture shock for me because yeah. when I went to my new high school my senior year, I went from Ohio where it was I used to joke around because <laughs> I'm Jewish. Yeah. So I used to joke around like that my house was like, you know, the ethnic side of town. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody had ever met a Jewish person. It was like weird for them, you know? Um, then I moved to Framingham and it's like there were fifty two different languages spoken at my new school. And it was so you had to you you had to get culture. It was culture shock. Like what yeah. is this? It was awesome. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to Victorville, California? Yeah. Yeah. I went to high school in Victorville, California. Oh. And, yeah. It, Victorville has kind of a similar. It has changed a lot. But Ohio the reason I say that is I went from Victorville, and I went to college in San Diego. Oh yeah. So your my similar. horizons got whoo, so similar. Yeah. Like yeah. the first time, suddenly you're like, I can stay up as late as I want. Oh, I have a 7 a.m. class Yeah, in, in accounting. <laughs> I failed. No, that's a lot. But yeah, but, yeah when, but you, you when you get a knock, you when you get a knock at your patio sliding door, which is your door to the you know the apartment yeah. complex pool in the middle, that situation. When you get a knock from your coworker who happens to live two doors down, asking if you want to hit a, of acid, it, and you come from you know high desert small town. You're like, what is this? I'm like, no, I'm good, thanks. And That's so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was weird when I moved. When I moved, to, but to, to be totally honest, like that's probably what pushed me even harder into music was that when I so I taught myself to play guitar when I was like 17, like right before we left Ohio. Doesn't everybody? I had started <laughs> like like teaching myself to play guitar right. and write write songs. But so by the time we got to Massachusetts, I didn't know anybody. I literally was like, it was almost like a movie, like a stereotypical, like I'd carry that guitar around everywhere. Right. And instead of going to eat lunch, I would look at the cafeteria and see all these people I didn't know. I would just turn around, like sit in the quad and like play guitar. So, but it, and it, it, it helped because people were like, who is that guy with the guitar, you know? And I learned some things and I got better and better. And new musicians, especially new songwriters, there is a, there's a, I know what you mean. I, I was kind yeah. of the same way. There's a talent that if you can figure this thing out, it helps. Especially if you're not so confident about the, the performance you're giving. If you can just basically kind of just remember why you wrote the song and, and in your mind's eye sing that song or even close your eyes if you have to. But I always had to, there, I would close my eyes until I felt confident again and I would open my eyes again. But I would always stare above yeah. Whoever I was performing for. Yeah. yeah. I was terrified of, like, the crowds playing in front of people. But I liked the feeling. <laughs> because, uh, I know this is embarrassing, I'm even going to bring this up, but I have to bring it up. It's part of the whole journey, right? Right. When I was, like, a real little kid, I was obsessed with Elvis. Presley. Yep. Like, it was the first time I had seen it. Whatever it was, it, like, hit me, which is weird, because my parents were not, like, Elvis fans, you know? Not a big Jewish just, following? No, I, mean, I don't know. That's Neil Diamond, right? <laughs> um, Today! Anyway. Yeah. So, but it was weird. Like, it was something that I picked up on my own when I was real little. Um, and my dad and my mom sort of, they were open to it and kind of pushed me towards, here's all the info, you know, and let me right. kind of like, 
But what that what that did was like by the time I was like eight years old, I was <laughs> I was like a little Elvis impersonator. All these little like <laughs> national competitions, I'd like shake around and sing with that fake Elvis voice, you know, and play real much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I loved it. I loved performing, and I loved. You know, I'd like soaked up all the information I could about Elvis. Uh, but what was really cool about that was that it sort of led me into like what what were the things that influenced him? And it was like gospel, old country, old blues, mm -hmm. which is like I think all the music I play now comes from those things, you know? Yeah. So I had a really cool education into like music where I just kind of was like, oh, I'm following like all the things that he was interested in. And that brought me into like a very natural like you know progression like oh like the Beatles and Zeppelin and the Stones and like I and I even like love I went through like a phase where I was like I love Sinatra and like the Rat Pack and I just like really like love music and the stories behind it right. but I always kind of put all these people on like a pedestal like in my mind they're not real people they're yeah, like yeah. they're like you know, these imaginary, like, heroes, you know? And uh, so it's funny, because then we'll talk about it later, but that thing I did this summer, I got to literally, like, kind of see them in a more human way, you know? <laughs> Some of them. Yeah, and I, I, I know the feeling, because uh, until I started doing original music in this town, and, and starting to, you know, kind of get in the scene, you know, know people and get known, I had this idea of what it meant to be a professional musician, Right. And that whole journey of, you know, like, like I remember doing a show where my band was supposed to open the headliners, the drummer was supposed to have a baby any time now. So he's, and, and the middle act, the guitarist had a real thing. It was like, can we please play first? I, I just want to get this. I, I, I just want to do get it. it over I, can't, I can't handle waiting <laughs> around. And so we're like, We'll headline, you know, okay. And it, it was at Vamped, and it, it turned out to be a great show. Um, I think it was the first time playing Vamped, so I was like, oh, this is really cool. All right, we're headlining, cool. But um, try, try having an interview show, and you'll, you'll really get to know that we're, they're all just people. I wish I was special. They're yeah. all just people. They all come in. They all worry about what they look like. They all, you know, worry, right. you know, you know and, and um, they all have their idiosyncrasies like we all do and that's the thing like um apps like like tiktok especially like the, the ones that like to post thirst traps you've got to remember they're just people and they are feeling they're, they're doing that yeah. to make themselves feel good but they got, got their own hang-ups strong their own opinions issues. about all of that stuff yeah, on tiktok yeah but I, I i i've got i've got one but i yeah. i've got some strong opinions and I'll talk about that too later, too, when we get to the, about what I did this past summer. You know? Right on. Well, we're going to skip over that just because you said yeah. that. But, uh, yeah. I wanted to, number one, you once got paid in t-shirts and a Frisbee? That happened this past summer. Yeah, man, I, so, like, <laughs> were, I've been... Well, through, like, were you promised a certain amount of money and they just couldn't deliver? It was like a scam. What they did was... Ah! They totally scammed us. They... So they, I, I got booked a show mm -hmm. to play this, basically like a townie bar, <laughs> somewhere in Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. Like I'm, I was, I'm down. Basically, like, okay, so this this past summer, we did. I felt this like call to action. I wanted to see what was going on with live music across the country. I wanted to get back to my original music, and I wanted to also. I have like. I, I'm, I know that I'm an idiot. I don't know the inner workings of the music business or how things really work. And I have this real like thirst, like curiosity for like to be educated in mm -hmm. it because I want to do it and I want to be good at it and successful. And, uh, you know, and I want to learn. So I was like, but I can't leave my kids here. I have two kids. Right. I'm like, well, what if I take them with me on the road? RV. Yeah, not so, we couldn't afford that. Let's like, just let's just get into it. He, he's talking about his Highway to Hal <laughs> tour, basically. Yeah. So and you're managed by your brother Evan yeah, Savar. My brother, my younger brother. He's eight years younger than me. He had just sold a business, oh. uh, and he came over during the quarantine. I had just written a new song called Next Year, and he said, "Like, what are you doing?" And my brother, like, super business minded. The, like high energy, kind of quirky guy, right. 
also like he's a hater. No, he's not a hater. He's just skeptical. He's like cautiously skeptical about everything, you know. <laughs> um, and we never worked together because maybe because he never could see like how he could help me in any way, you know. Or right. What was? Uh, can I ask what type of business it was that he sold? It was called My Resident Link, and it was uh, basically like a neighborhood app. Oh, okay. You know, people can pay their rent and stuff through the and app. He, he developed that app? Or he just... Yeah, oh, he right. developed it. And just, yeah, he was... I could see why he was like, how do I help you well, he didn't, other than you build know, a website or something? My brother's always, like, jumping into things. Like, it, it was kind of a joke for a while, like, the old Honeymooner episodes, like, yeah. where Ralph Cramden was always, like, had some idea to be rich. Like, we would... All my, me and my brother and my dad would always try to, like, outrich each other. Like, hey, like, this is, <laughs> this is our idea, you know? And just a lot of stupid ideas, but some, you know, some are great. Mm. But um, yeah, so he came over and he was like, play me that, play, play the song. And I was like, nope. nope. Uh, he was like, come on, man. And I was like, all right, fine. So I played the song and I was like reading the words. And when I looked up, he was crying. Mm. And he said, hey, like, what are we waiting for? Like, you should get out there. And like, this is the type of stuff that like speaks to people. And you should be sharing it with the world. And I'm like, yeah, I would love to do that. And I was like, I would love to be able to play music all over the place because I've never really played outside of Vegas. Right. You know, my professional career has been all in Las Vegas. And um, I was like, but I can't. I have, at the time, I have my one-year-old son and my seven-year-old daughter. And I was like, I can't be that guy who just leaves the family at home and goes on tour, you know? Right. So my brother said, in like a moment of like, just sheer, like, just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, why don't they come with us? And I'm like, yeah. yeah, what? So. That's what breaks are, that's what summer break is for. Exactly. Man. So what, what came out of the idea, that, that whole thing, the idea was that we're going to go across the country and what a weird thing, because it's not how you picture somebody going on tour. You know, it's like a family guy with a family. Like, You'd be surprised. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's people like me, for sure. Okay. But um, I thought it was interesting enough that we should document it, you know? Yeah. Um, so the idea was every city that I'd roll into, I would get some sort of history, musical history thing in each city. Right. Uh, like, we, like for instance, like we toured the Red Rocks <laughs> Amphitheater in Denver. Okay. With my family. They were there, you know? Then um, I would meet somebody who's successful in the business. And we're talking about, like, all angles of the business. Not just, like, you know, a performer, but, like management and people who, you know, um, run like, like the whiskey jam in Nashville, stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. and just kind of, they would tell me their stories and kind of give me some, uh, insight into like how they've been successful. And then I would play some like crummy dive bar <laughs> and that would be like the idea for each episode, you know, nice. kind of like diners driving the does, but like, instead of like, here's another restaurant or here's another bar, it's like, about live music across the country. Right on. Right, and we'll have a link down in the description for that yeah. whole series. Is it a series or is it just one big long thing? So we're, what, right now, it's we're trying to get it picked up. Ah. So we we're in like the early stages of like... Gotcha. We shot it. Syndication. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. It's all Everything is kind of up in the air right now, but it, it was like an amazing experience. We were gone for like eight weeks. Yes. And uh, we went all across the country. Um, so when we were in Missouri, this guy hired me to play his bar. And he <laughs> called us early in the afternoon. He said, you know, why don't you guys come down a little earlier? And like, I'll take care of you for supper. So okay. I was like, okay. So we go in there. And it's funny because the camera guys and my brother were like, let's go to that. I know it's a really good barbecue place. And I was like, no, this guy's going to give us free food. You guys are crazy. Oh, no. Let's go down and eat. What was it? So we went, uh -huh. and we didn't really order. Like, he, they brought out a bunch of food for us, and it was like tri-tip and ribs and stuff. Oh, so it wasn't like just greasy pizza and, and chicken no, tenders? No, it was like, it was, you know. They, they, so we ate. Okay. And then I was supposed to play three hours. I ended up playing for five with no breaks. And, and I do, that wasn't because somebody forced me to do that. I do that kind of thing all the time because I'm like a kid at the beach. Yeah. Like, forget to eat lunch. You get that feedback from the audience. and Yeah, as soon as the crowd is, like, throwing money at me and having a good time, I don't <laughs> want to stop, you know? Whore! I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens sometimes, too. So, I... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you know, it's okay. They got me pegged right. <laughs> now we're bringing pegging into this whole crap. <laughs> what did he say? So, I played, I played, like, 
five hours. The crowd was dancing. They had a great time. People sat there all night. I had a feeling when I walked in, like, they're going to love me. They don't get this very often here. I can yeah, tell. Yeah, like, that's the thing about going on a tour, especially if you're used to playing in Vegas, is that this is an oversaturated market. There are places thirsting yeah. for live music. They're so yeah. tired of the DJ or the, the, karaoke, or right. the uh, karaoke night. Or they had a DJ who played after me. I say DJ because he wasn't like a real DJ. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and yeah, but he was like a, a fun DJ. Like, I do this as a hobby. Like, uh, you know, and I'm like a 50 year old guy. Play, doesn't even DJ. have a DJ name. I think he did have a DJ <laughs> name, but it's, it's ridiculous, you know. So, so, so uh, you so you, you played, were playing five hours. I played, and then at the end of the night, they just like kind of said, "Hey, thank you." And I was like, "Well, what about the pay that we had spoken about?" He said, "Well, you guys ate the pay. It was that was your tab." And we were like, what? I was like, I just played five hours. And then he said, look. This is Blues Brothers? <laughs> it sounds like it. But this is real. Real. And then he said, you know what? Like, you did awesome. We really appreciate you coming in. Let me give you... And he goes in the back and he comes back with a t-shirt and a frisbee. I... <laughs> I'm not joking. Do you want to call him out? <laughs> no, nah, I mean... See, that's to, class. That's to class. be totally honest, like, I was getting, like, heated and it was late at night. I would be brother, too, man. My brother and the camera guys were like, they're kind of like, forget it, like stop, like let's leave, because we yeah. don't know, we don't, you don't know like who they, are, you know, what's quite going honestly, on. yeah, you don't know who's in the back or who, right, right. You know. And they're like, and I was getting like, uh, yeah, I was getting upset, and then my brother was like, look, like this story is gonna be worth more than the the pay would have been, you know. And I was like, there you go, there, see, and that it's class, crazy. that's class. It's crazy. Um, speaking of class. Your career and life have been influenced by everyone from Dr. Seuss and Calvin Coolidge to Elvis and Beethoven. <laughs> Who or what influences your original music? Man. Uh, you know, I, I'm like a big, like I sponge like a, everything, you know? I would say, you know, as a songwriter, kind of like the stuff that I was listening to, the, the, the songwriting stuff that I was listening to was, was like that... 90s singer songwriter kind of like alternative rock stuff right you know everything from like you know like vertical horizon oh wow <laughs> i can't let me just call them out but like matchbox 20 uh sure. you know chris cornell oh. nirvana uh and I, I mean i liked i was really into like some of some of like their that that was the stuff i was listening to on the radio you right. know um you know, like Oasis and the Black Crows and some of that stuff. And that kind of informed, like, a little bit the way I write. But I don't... I, what's weird is after years and years of doing this and writing music, I, I don't... I still don't know exactly what my sound is. Like, it's really weird because I'm about to record a five-song EP mm -hmm. with a producer. And... For the first time in my entire career playing music, we're trying to find what my sound is, you know, and what, what for the press stuff or, or just for like the direction of the EP? Um, the whole thing. Like really like what what's my brand, you know, like who am I as an artist and also what's what's my sound? Like because I, I think in my mind, like I want I've always done what I call like lowest common denominator recording, right. which essentially is like, here are my songs, let's get drums on it, let's get lead guitar, let's get bass, and it's like, there's no thought to it, it's right. just like, let's fill it up, you know, with other instruments and yeah. make it sound like, but now I have an opportunity to be like, well, let's play with it, you know, and um, I really, really like, I personally like that stuff that sounds like retro, but modern. You know, um, like a lot of the Mark Ronson like produced stuff, like mm -hmm. Amy Winehouse, Bruno Mars, like early stuff. Um, even like Duffy, do you remember that girl Duffy? I remember Duffy. You know, but like it sounded retro, but also new. Like that song "Get Lucky" that was on the radio all the time. Oh, um, by Daft Punk. And okay, Pharrell. I was just saying Duffy didn't do that. It just, yeah, yeah, it just Punk. that sounded like a funk, funk song. Funk, funk, funk. Yeah. Funk. Yeah, and, when and you're hearing, Ronson, like, does, yeah, Ronson and... does a lot of that type of stuff where you just can't help but yeah. think into the song. Yeah. And, and the problem is, if you're 
if you're a songwriter and you're just like, but I have a story to tell. Right. You can't write. A, you can't tell a story necessarily. It's, it's tricky. Like, and I. But I. So I've never. I've never tried to write a specific way. Mm -hmm. I just enjoy that type of music where it sounds like old and new together. You know, you're like, oh, this is cool because mm -hmm. it's a throwback to. Well, that probably you speaks know. to all of the influences you have just from playing all the music you do. Yeah. It's bleed it, it's in there and you're like, well, okay, wait, what's me as opposed to the four hours I play the right. show? Well, I, I have, it's funny, like, my songwriting just over the last maybe like two years has mm -hmm. changed. I can tell it's changed and I think that some of my friends slash fans who have been listening to me for a while, they're, they're like, oh, this is different, you know? It also hits differently, I'm noticing. Uh, I wrote a song like a week ago, and uh, I, that's one of the songs I was going to play. Which just, you'll see, like, it's, it's just different. I wanted, I actually had a, a really good friend who I've known for years, and she told me, she said, I want to give you like a homework assignment. Uh, she was like, a lot of your stuff is, is like, they're stories, you know, I'm telling a lot of stories. She was like, you should just write a song that's fun. Something that's danceable, too, you know? And right. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot, you know? And, and my go-to in my mind was like, Ed Sheeran kind of does that, you know? And so I was like, I'll, to tell you I'll write a little poppy Ed Sheeran style yeah. Yeah. song. And uh, and in my mind, I was like, what would be a cool, a cool thing to write? Like, Because I, I need like a, there needs to be like a hook for me. Like something that's like, I don't know, like an idea hook, you know? Yep. So my idea was, I would write a song from the perspective of alcohol. Like alcohol was singing you a love song. This is what it would be. Bare naked ladies. Oh yeah, well yeah, that's but that's really I obvious, you know. You. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a little a little more ambiguous, you know. Speaking of alcohol, we're gonna take a quick booze break, so we'll be right back. Booze Yay. break. We're back, and uh, he's gonna help me. Santa was weird for me this year. <laughs> I got some flavored whiskeys. One of which was Bird Dog Blackberry Whiskey, and he's never tried it. I've never tried it. So, give it a shot. Full no pun intended. <laughs> and for the record, you're vaccinated. I am. I'm vaccinated, and he will not leave here drunk, I promise. Double vaccinated. Actually, I've had 16 vaccination Oops. shots. It was an accident. I, uh, I, I apologize for filling up your glass, sir, but I didn't want you to feel left out. Don't okay. you don't do not feel the need to do that all at once. Whatever. I mean, I'm I'm a professional well, musician. Sure, we'll see. You know. <laughs> well, sir. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, here's to you, and here's to me. And if ever we should disagree, then the hell with you. And here's to me. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you gotta tap. And oh, I spilled already. Shit. Oh, that's that's cough medicine. Hmm. Sweet. Where's the bartender? I'm gonna punch him. Whoa. Wow. Let me wash the taste of that on my mouth with some regular whiskey. <laughs> that was good. Weird. I'd rather have Captain. I'd rather have the Cannonball Blast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh God. Well, I bet though if you mix that with Screwball, it might taste like peanut butter boop. and jelly. <laughs> Strawberry flavored whiskey? Oh god, or grape flavored whiskey? It'd be a lot. Why? Why do you do this, whiskey makers? Anyway. <laughs> Blah. Well, thanks, man. Now I don't have to review that for the channel. Well, you're welcome. That was <laughs> So we were talking about influences, and, and I was talking about influences for your original music, but now I want to pivot. Pivot. Um, I want to pivot to, let's talk about your influences. What was that uh, earliest musical influence that got you? And we talked to Elvis. Right? Was Elvis pretty much it that said, I want to do that? Yes. Like, I want to. Exactly. What <laughs> it, it was, it was something about like the way, like it was like a charisma thing and the way people reacted. Yep. And then as I got older, it was it different dimensions to me that made it yeah. continue to be like interesting to me. Like, you know, a lot of people don't realize that Elvis up, up until really the drug years, was very insecure. Even during the drug years. Well, I mean, that was why the drugs got in there. But he was very insecure. Yeah. He, there was a lot of, of bravado he, that where he was, you know, 
he got he got that that response from especially from the teenage girls, and he was like, he didn't know it. For it's funny, like when I was in Memphis, uh, Down in Memphis. I went to the Levitt Show, which is where Elvis had his first paid gig when he was like super. They didn't even oh, wow. got his name wrong. They called him Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Can you even imagine? Like that's hilarious. And uh, and he was super nervous. And the story is that he went out on stage, and the girls started screaming. And he just because he was pretty. played a song. He didn't know why they were doing that. He came off stage and he said to his manager, like, he was like, what the, why, why, why were they screaming like that? His manager says, because you're shaking your legs, man. And he was like, I was? And he was like, yeah. He was so nervous and he didn't even know he, he was doing know. it. He didn't know. He just like, he like would sit on the balls of his like feet. Oh yeah. And he just would, sh he wasn't, there was no like, like what, be, what he ended up doing was, which is really smart. Was that he ended up leaning into it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and totally. that created like that Elvis dance stuff. But but naturally, he just would like stand on like his tippy toes and like he was nervous, so he literally would just shake. <laughs> so you young people have to realize, at the time Elvis came out, oh. nobody was doing anything no, like that. It was like he was taking music that was traditionally, you know, black people music. Really, like like it was written by black people. It was written, it was yeah. It was came from all that, and he was doing it. But he was doing, they called him Elvis the Pelvis for a reason. So crazy. Ed Sullivan was like, we're going to shoot you from the waist up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird time yeah. in America. Um, it's weird now. So, switching from influences, um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Highway to Howl. Yeah. Which is a great name, by the way. Who Thanks. came up with that? That was my brother. That was that was not me. Evan. I originally was kind of like, what? So stupid. I at least you didn't use. I don't like puns. At least you didn't try to use the ACDC song as like yeah, yeah. the the, the well, background. Well, to be totally honest, like I I also think like that might not stick. We might we've been bump. I have a song called Dive Bar Rockstar that they've been bumping around. Like, oh, that kind of describes the show. Honestly, accurately and yeah. We'll see. I would have though. It, I mean, Dive Bar Rockstar is a great name for. I can see that on a TV screen. Yeah. I yeah. can't necessarily see Highway to Howl because then you're like, who's Howl? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Howl is Howl. Yeah. Hmm. Trust me, if I had known that there was a horror movie called Room Six that has YouTube videos up the wazoo, <laughs> I I would have there never is. named That's this. That's true. There. If you search you on YouTube Room Six, just Room and the number six, like this, you get all this horror movie before you get to me. And I never would have done it. Instead, you got to go Room 6 LV or Room 6 Josh. Yeah, yeah. Even if you do Room 6 Reviews, Room 6 Interviews, had I known. It's like Dave Grohl said of the Foo Fighters. If, if he knew this was going to be a thing, he never would have named it Foo Fighters. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. They're amazing, by the way. Yeah. And I love Yes. Um, I had, uh, when Circus Sick was here, we were talking about Circus Sick. Yeah. Uh, the drummer, I think. And... Uh, his uh, girlfriend, fiance, I don't remember, were going to Foo Fighters that night. I've seen I was it. like, what are you doing so here? Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to, we used to, before the pandemic, we used to go to a lot of music festivals. Yeah. One, we went to Outside Lands, Foo Fighters were there one year, and it was so good. I mean, there's a reason they, they, they headline all the time. Yeah. Like, you don't see them opening for anybody because they just put on an amazing show. The music's amazing. Yeah, too, I, I agree. Um, moving on. This is not a Foo Fighter channel, despite <laughs> all the times I talk about Foo Fighters. Uh, can we talk about the Paramount Pictures 3D Cirque movie thing? Yeah. Is that happening That's a deep still? dive. That happened. That it's happened. on your website. It's yeah, just not a link. Funny. That's so funny. Okay, so uh, when I first moved here, mm -hmm. there was a period of time where... I didn't know what to do with myself. I played, I only wanted to do original music. Two words, Palms Casino. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's where we Palms met. Casino a lot. Michael Soli. Yeah, and and Michael Soli. Playing and that Palms Duarte Casino. And that was amazing. Or, or, or Rick, yeah, Rick Duarte. I wanted that so Brother bad. Luke. Like, now, yeah, that was when I first moved here. Uh, and I, I wanted to be so. Good. I wanted to be better than I was, you know. <laughs> Take a number, I still pal. Still do, you know. <laughs> but also, um, you know, I was getting experience and stuff. But and it was Vegas, and you didn't see a lot of opportunities to play original music. Yeah, that, at that or time. No. I mean, if I, I mean, I, if I'm remembering, we're talking like kind that of was a spot. 
2002 or something? Two, yeah. yeah. It, it was, uh, the original music seems to go like this in this yeah. town. And it was that, it was kind of, it was sort of on its way up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was weird. It was kind of like, there's a lot of political, anytime something like that happens, there's always a lot of political stuff involved. But um, Speaking of which, sorry to just distract, but yeah. playing the, the open mic at Palms, uh, at Palms Casino, hosted by Michael Soley. Yeah. That taught me a very important lesson. It was the very first time I'd ever had a, my performance interrupted by a basketball game because the owner of the Palms owned the Sacramento Kings. And I was supposed to go on. I have a very similar story to what you're about to say. This I wasn't think. an open mic. This was like an uh, invite kind of. It was when they were doing the, you know, here's our the here's who's performing. Yeah, the showcase. Um, and it was my first time doing it. And I was supposed to go on. And I got like two songs when I was supposed to have like a half an hour. I have a similar story that's cr as just as crazy and, and upsetting. Bring it! I was, uh, <laughs> Spilled the tea, son. About a year <laughs> after I moved here, mm -hmm. um, I had a manager and I recorded my first CD, an album, <laughs> CDs. I don't do those anymore. See kids, they're um, used to be <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I have to when I do uh, people's <laughs> reviews for their music if, they, if it's a full album I have to stop myself from saying CD yeah because it's well, like it's all it. digital right. it's all digital now yeah unless it is a physical CD but anyway go ahead um, my, my car doesn't even have a CD player anymore I just found out my new car doesn't it was very upsetting to me I was I, like no I, I have a minivan because I am a father and it, it was a band vehicle it is an 07 and it was the last year they put tape players and CD players in wow. the same vehicle. I've never used the tape player. <laughs> I would use it. I, got I some would, tapes. but I don't have any tapes. I got some tapes. I don't even know if it works. Um, there, go ahead. Yeah, so I all I wanted was I wanted my CD release show at the Palms. So oh, yeah, a couple fully. months ahead of time, my manager worked it out, and they were going to give me a Thursday night at the Palms. It was going to be in March. Not a bad night. We thought. Well, we got so I was supposed to play at eight o'clock. We got there at not five bad. to make sure everything was cool. So we get there, and we had promoted like crazy. This is old school, yeah. before like the internet's, you know, like we. Hey, come to my show! Exactly, hey, come to my show! Yes, on the street. I've like I basically like I plaster that's the these, <laughs> like flyers everywhere, mm -hmm. and um, it's big. My big night. We had some, you know, the guy from Cool and the Gang was coming out. Some reporters, like we did. Well, so you had some of these people I mentioned in the intro coming to your to CD my release CD release thing. Yeah, nice. Like, right. That reminds yeah. me of a joke, but go ahead. Okay, so uh, we get there. There's three guys sitting in the lounge watching a basketball game because it's during March Madness. I see it coming, but go on. So I'm like, is this a problem? You know, like, what do we do? And there, and uh, Michael Soli comes out, and he's like, "No, nah, you're good. Don't worry about it." Um, so then it's now it's seven o'clock, an hour before I'm supposed to perform. Dun, dun. My people start showing up and filling up the room. These three guys are still there watching the game. Okay, so that, well, okay. And so he said, he's talking to the management. Me being my soul. Yeah, he comes back and he's like, I'm sorry. I don't know. There's nothing we can do. You know, like, we just got to wait till the game's over. Yep. Um, and so at the time, like, I'm just like a kid. I'm like, you know, whatever. I'm upset, but I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, and now as an adult, I'm like, why did they just kick him out and send him to the sports book? It was like, they could watch him there. You know what I mean? It was three yeah, guys. Like, I, what there's they... an event. Like, yeah. be like, hey, there's an event tonight. Uh, but they didn't do that. And the way they played it was, so the game ended, and then this, a second game started. And they didn't leave. And they didn't turn off the TVs. So and the volume's on? Yeah. So oh, essentially... Oh, you had to fight with that. I left... Uh, I, I ended up playing, I was supposed to play 8, I ended up going on at 11 o'clock. Oh. People had left. Oh. The big, some of the big deal people were gone. Man. And I felt like, I felt like somebody had like sabotaged my, no, my it, it, first CD it, The owner show, of the Palms you know? is, yeah, tr yeah. I remember, ago, yeah, you know, man. So. Yeah, but that, 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 that is a, new musicians, that is a very good lesson. Just because something is, build and promote it a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that's what's happening. How many times have you been to a show where whether you were the opening act or not, it didn't start on time? Oh, through no fault of your own. It happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 there's just 
you just roll with it, or you can be, you know, whiny bitch. And you can complain about it. Right. And and the ones that complain about it tend to not get invited back. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta be. Yep. You that know. being said, the sh when I start putting on showcases, thanks to my patrons and anybody that buys merch or or anything else, they'll start on time. Damn it. By hook or by crook, I will make sure they start on time. I'll tell you, I, I was doing... So, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I was so um, thirsty for original music in Vegas. Because I became, over time, with the band and by myself, I became a human jukebox, right? Yeah. Which is great for to make a living, and I right. love performing, and I do my own versions of all these songs. Mm -hmm. But... But you know, my heart is like I want to tell stories. I want I want to make people feel good through my own music. I get it. And I also want to be around people that are doing that and creating and stuff. So I was like, you know what? I, I don't like. It's not the open mics aren't enough for me. Like I yeah. feel like the open mics. The problem yeah. with open mics are like you have to wait for your turn. Well, that's, I'm okay <laughs> with that. For, look, sometimes there were, trust me, there were times. Like, even at karaoke, I'm just like get off stage. Stage. Yeah, no. well, that's the problem. The problem is like that there's no quality control, and also mm -hmm. you don't have to play original songs at an open mic. So um, you're yeah. getting a bunch of people, and you're like every person that goes up there, it's literally like a, a crapshoot. Yeah, crap. Like, yeah. Are, is this going to be good or not? And, and of course, the covers are always going to get better response. The covers are decent. If they're it decent. frustrates me when yeah. I see that at open mics because I'm like, you don't have to do that. Here, it's all over town, you know. But, yeah, exactly. Um, but I just feel like it's it's also a real basic way to get a bunch of people into a room. That being and said, <laughs> if it's their first, like I'm brand new, I'm still I don't know how to write a song That's or anything. Perfect for that. I get it. Like, yeah, I get it. But if I've seen you for the last two months, you know, every week, and you all you're doing is playing the. Look, I'm I not used to gonna... host open mics, dude, oh just like God, you. And, and when you you hear the same song from the same person every Look, single time, I, I'm not gonna name who these people are, <laughs> but there's an open mic now that's in kind of a cool spot that I went to a couple times to check it out, mm -hmm. and it's just like all the other open mics. Literally, there are some people who walked in really nicely dressed, like middle aged guy, you know, essentially, okay. who like is a professional performer from something else. Oh. And he got up there, and what does he do? He does his shtick, which is like, I'm doing Hamilton songs now. Yeah. Or like, I'm doing... I like, bet I know exactly <laughs> where you're talking about, and who runs it. And I remember, if it's where I think it is, and we'll talk off camera, I remember more than once showing up, being putting my name in first, Oh, and then they just and come midnight. Yeah, I'm I, I'm allowed to not perform of that either because it's oh well. Here's all the people who have acts on the strip, and let's yeah. you know because that's our people. So yeah, and, and and we'll talk. But yeah, so I wanted to create something that was more pointed in a direction. I wanted to showcase. I wanted to create a scene right. for original music in Vegas, and I thought the best way that <laughs> I could do that was to have a songwriter showcase. Where literally, like, I would vet the talent, and not like I'm an expert or whatever, but, right, right. but I would at least listen to them beforehand. That's the one at the Artisan? And, uh, that was at the Artisan. Oh. I'll tell you all about that, too. All right. Um, the same as soon as a goddamn So showcase. we were doing, literally, like, it was like, I would, I would get six to twelve songwriters mm -hmm. who would each play four original songs. Right. Not two. Not even three, four songs, oh, and they I would kind of push them to talk about the stories behind yeah. their music and kind of share their lives a little bit, and it would be people in the room who were there to hear original music. Right, and you know that's and, how I tried to do my open mics too. Is I, I think I would limit it to three because I I just had to at some yeah, point yeah. because I was like, uh, but people are signing up know. on a list and there's yeah, a yeah, million yeah. people. Yeah, and you don't want them to feel like. Oh, I signed up, but I didn't get up to play, you know? Yeah. But Did my you do yours, like, like, in order of sign-up? No, I didn't. nobody signed up. I oh. literally would organize and book. Who oh, oh, this was a, week. here's who's appearing. Like, it was a showcase. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, showcase. And I we promote them. Yeah, so it's yeah. called Homegrown Songwriter yes, Showcase. Yes, it was. 
and we're Which, doing it for a long time. I apologize for interrupting. I thought no, you're good. I thought that was Comp ninety two point three's home co. I home found out later that they had a. I a thought you were. Sausage. It was in conjunction with Lori yeah. Steele. Which shout Should out to Lori Steele. Yeah. You you're the true hero because if you're a local band and you have a recording and it's rock and roll at all, they still do it. Yeah. That's beautiful. There is. I remember hearing my band, The Suspense, at midnight coming home from rehearsal, and I turned it on. And they said our name. That's awesome. And somehow the production value was better. <laughs> running <laughs> through, they their, run it through their, their stuff. Yeah. And I was They're just like, and some girls pulled pull up next to him. And the bass player at the time opened the window and said, This is our band! <laughs> <laughs> like, cringe, big... cringe. But it was, it is no, such a like nice that feeling. That's the thing you do. Like yeah. that scene where they hear themselves for the first time. Like, exactly. I want that. And, yeah. and, and, and I mean, I, I've been on, I, I've you know, had stuff played before or, or it, since then. On on Hoist Still Show, huge shout out. Unfortunately, she doesn't play YouTube episodes, so <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out. Someday. Yeah, She'll but out. yeah, but yeah. So anyway, so homegrown we, showcase. We did it. So what happened was essentially like what happened was I called up Artisan back in two thousand, the end of two thousand eighteen, right? Beginning of two thousand nineteen, and I said like, I want a gig. I think I, I want to play at Artisan, and they're like, we just have DJs, and I was like, I have heard mixed. Stories about artisan. Well, I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I, I love artisan and I hate artisan. I've got yep. a lot of like opinions about it because I was there. But what happened was, they were like at the time like, we only have DJs, and I was like, why? You have a stage. I was like, it's not. It's the artisan hotel. It's you're not a club. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm thinking of. Um... You're thinking of artifice. Artifice. Yeah, yeah. No, so sorry. The artisan hotel. The artisan, on the other like, hand, is you know we want to. Hey, can I just swing by? My band can come by and just take some photos. Yeah, it costs this right. much. Well, I was like, what are, what are you doing? Why, why the DJs? And they were like, well, what would you do better? And I like I started talking because I like that's what I do. And they're like, write us up a business plan. And I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Like, okay. So I, I basically just wrote up a plan. I was they like, seem to take themselves a little too seriously. <laughs> they were, they let me, to their credit, and this was the old management that worked there. Oh, they changed management? Oh, yeah. Mm. So they let me basically be their unofficial entertainment guy. So they said, this is our budget. And what do you want to do with it? You know? And I was like, this is what I want to do. I was like, once a week, I want to do a songwriter showcase. Another night a week, I want to do a blues funk jam. And then the other remaining two nights a week that you guys are going to let me have entertainment there, I'd like to book and pay acts to play, like little duos, trios, and solo acts. And then one Sunday a month, I'd like to do an art and music event together combined called One Crazy Happy Hour. I remember, so I remember seeing doing that. that. Yeah. And it was great. It was awesome. And what started happening uh, with the Wednesday night thing was that the musicians, songwriters, started to like build like a little community and it was it was really cool like everybody was like a little family and uh it was starting to feel like a scene Fond and memories. then covid yeah. Yeah, and then covid and then we came back from covid and they had a new manager and he was from the club promotions world oh. and he did not get live music at all it's, it's for background he, didn't, it's for background, yeah. he yeah. didn't he didn't really want it i knew the writing was kind of on the wall and um, <sighs> he ended up. That reminds me of another story. Go getting ahead. Getting <laughs> rid of like getting rid of all of it, everything you know. Mm -hmm. But um, and and then to to the credit of like Mount Charleston Retreat, where I play a lot of shows now, mm -hmm. they were letting me do a songwriter showcase out there every two weeks on Sundays. And it was really awesome when it was nice out, but then it got too yeah. old. You've had Ben Lynn and Joey Hines up there, yeah, among yeah, others. of course, yeah. Yep. And then that shut, so that we shut that down to like spring, you know, just until it gets nice again, basically. And then it burned down. No, no, that's the lodge. <laughs> oh, the sorry. The retreat is good. We're good on the retreat. Um, but yeah, so when we, the last show that I did at Artisan, before I left for my tour, mm -hmm. we did a song swap night, Ooh. which literally was all original songwriters covering each other's songs. I like it that. It was so cool. I, I, I can think of a lot of people I'd love to cover. 
Joey Hines covered one of my songs. Fuck Joey Hines. I'm just was, <laughs> He's got those shirts. I have one upstairs in room six. I told him that's the most genius thing I've ever seen. It is. Um, I mean, if you if you don't care about alienating some people, go for it, man. He's like, if you like me, you know, like, buy my album. Yep. If you don't, I have these t-shirts that say, like, fuck Joey Hines. <laughs> I was like, that's so funny. But, like, uh, Casey um, from Second Echo... Casey yes, I'm sorry. I was nice thinking songs. Casey and the Sunshine Band for some reason. Yes, Casey, Second Echo's been on the show. Yep. Okay, so they're yep. amazing. And uh, he and I are, are in, we, we've been talking, uh, we were at Mandolin's uh, EP release Okay. at uh, Champagne's Cafe. Yeah. And uh, I got a review up there. And we uh, we were talking about this uh, podcast he was doing. Right. And maybe doing some cross yeah. thing. Yeah. It's that just schedules. Yeah. He is that songwriter's podcast. But anyway, you were saying. Um, so he did one of my tunes, and I did one of his songs. I did a Michael Richter song. You know who Michael Richter is? It's ringing a bell. Super talented. Super talented. How do I know that name? He's just... See, I love doing the show because I hear all these names and bands that I've never heard you of. You gotta... And then I get to re- re- rehearse. Uh, yeah, rehearsal. look him up later. He's yeah. good. He's a good friend of mine, also, like, super talented. But I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you still on the hunt for blood diamonds for your guitar and uh, <laughs> still looking for Dave Matthews? That one thing. That one thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. That TMZ interview. <laughs> when you see the guitar, you'll understand that question even better when you see Did the you guitar. Did you bring it? Yeah. Squeak. My little guitar. Yeah. Still, I'm and I'm coming for you, Dave Matthews. Just <laughs> wait. <laughs> he doesn't he care. wants. He wants he that red. Care. He wants that uh, red rocks. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Still spot. Um, that, I, I saw that and I was just like, I gotta ask him. Ask him <laughs> but seriously it's though, gonna haunt me. That's... Seriously though, um, let's talk about your rhinestone. It is rhinestones. It's not blood diamonds. It's not. It's you want to hear the story, the real it's story. Not, is it diamonds? No, no. It's because I'm gonna mug you. It's diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, during so it was the first like big boy guitar I ever bought. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That cost more than like. Hundred bucks, you know. Well, I was going to ask you about gear. What do you rock at a show? So, so what brand is it? It's Breedlove. Oh, Breedlove. It's Breedlove good, guitar. Good brand. And you covered um, it with stuff. Well, what happened was one night my band was <laughs> Every playing good story at O'Shea's casino. What happened was. You remember O'Shea's casino, like old O'Shea's casino? Are they closed? Well, they yes, they're essentially for twenty three years they were open or whatever twenty five years. I mean, I remember it, but I never went in. Then it was great. It was like dirty, but like kind of awesome. How it was so like, like double down floors, or like dive bar? But but like on right on Flamingo and Las Vegas Boulevard, and it had like beer pong tournaments. And Vince Neil's tattoo shop was in there. And oh, uh, we used oh to play yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And it was like whatever that whatever the ingredients were that made that place what it was. Like my band would would have like the best shows there, and we were playing a show one night. This guy got drunk and he fell over the monitor, like on the front of the stage. And he, first, like he, he basically fell onto a mic stand, hit my violinist like spot in the forehead. Wait, with what? Like with the microphone? microphone. Oh, Jesus. boom! Like right in the forehead. <laughs> she sort of like, doubled that. back <laughs> and knocked over some cymbals. This is Nikki, right? Uh, no. I mean, uh, uh, Nina. Nina, I'm not Nikki. Sorry, time, Nina. Yeah, Nina De, yeah, De Gregorio. De Gregorio. Yeah. De Gregorio. I'm sorry, Nina. It's another. Time it's been a while since I've seen you, and I, I, I completely it's forgot. It's been a while since I've seen her too. It's yes, okay. I know, Nina D. It's okay. She's busy. She's busy she, having like a life. She kicks a so much ass on the violin. Anyway, she is. She's good. Yes. She's real good. I got to play with her for a while, yes. which was fun. Um, Moving on. Yeah, so Play. we, <laughs> so I, a bunch of stuff fell down, it was like a domino effect, and the last thing that hit the ground was one of that guitar. When I picked it up, it had almost like a mouth that would open and shut. Oh. And I was like, no. Damn. So I took it to get it fixed, and the guitar guy was like, I don't know, man. He was like, you could grill glue it shut. He was like, but every time it gets to be 112 degrees in Vegas, it's going to like melt and warp. And he's like, just get a new guitar. And I was like, okay, and I put it away in a drawer with my dreams. <laughs> and you didn't have it insured, of course, because at that point, why would you? Right. So I forgot all about it. Got new guitars, grew up, became a man. <laughs> your wife and kids would probably disagree. I, had some, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, they, your fiance. Yeah, kids. yeah, they definitely would disagree. But um, so fast forward to this past April during the quarantine, mm-hmm. couldn't go anywhere, and we had like a Harry Potter closet in our house. I'm oh, sorry, what? You know, like a closet under the stairs. Does it have a magic mirror that shows you your deepest no, desires? No, it's, it's just like a, a, a closet inside. 
He claws it under the stairs. Okay. So, um... Oh, that... Oh, sh- oh God. Remember he lived in the, <laughs> the first Harry Potter? I, yes. I, I, I... Wow. I, I, I blanked that part out because of my childhood. But anyway. That's sad. Yeah. So, um... Yeah. That's our closet under the yeah, stairs. Yeah, we had so we had a closet under the stairs, and we thought, let's clear it out and let's make it like a cool fort for my daughter, you know, so she can hang in there or whatever. Right. So, my fiance orders this weird wallpaper, and she's like, put it up, you know, like when you can't sleep tonight. And I'm like, yeah, cool, okay, because I can do that. It was just big okay. stickers, you know, like they you so you put them on like the wall. fathead stickers or or like literally like it just. You, wallpaper but it was like you peel the back off and just stick it onto the wall so decals okay but like full not like just a deep but like you because you could wallpaper a whole room with it you right. know it was like a little time consuming so three o'clock in the morning i'm doing this like diy project right <laughs> the fumes are getting to me i found the old guitar i was like oh yeah and i opened it up and i was like oh yeah right, right. <laughs> and i put it down i'm putting this weird wallpaper up and i'm like I have like four other guitars. I wonder if I could just like stick this, measure it, cut it out, and stick it to this old guitar. Get out. And then have like kind of like a cool, unique looking guitar, you know? Like I have nothing to a lose. A wallpaper never... guitar is a new one. I, I literally like, I like cut the strings off. I took, and I cleaned it up a little and I gorilla glued it shut. And then I measured this thing and I stuck it on there. I'm like, Okay, and I went, to, and that's my main guitar now, which is crazy. Wait, 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 wait. so how did wallpaper translate into rhinestones? You'll see. It looks like, okay. it looks diamond. Yeah. By the way, have you been to Fremont Country Club? I've never been in there. I finally went to the Necromantics show. Uh, I've got a review here. And behind the bar is a giant silver horseshoe, and in the middle of that horseshoe is your guitar. What? <laughs> is an acoustic guitar covered in rhinestones. Oh, that's cool. And when I saw you, I was like, wait, 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 wait. And I go, I look through my, my photos, and I'm like, is that his guitar? <laughs> that's so funny. So, yeah, um, you, you be the judge. Let us know in the comments. Compa- watch both <laughs> videos and compare. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and um, cut a little short. Yeah, that's cool. And we're going to get to performance-wise. You don't use any pedals when you perform, do you? Just no, tuning just, pedal, nothing. Just literally acoustic. You tune on the. You have a tuner on the guitar. Mm-hmm. See, I don't have a, a tuner built into mine. I just have. Uh, I used things. to have that, but I was never good at like keeping myself in tune that way. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe yeah. I could do it now, but. Yeah, well, right on. We'll see if he can be in tune upstairs in room six. Thank you for watching. In the meantime, we're gonna temporarily say uh, goodbye and see you upstairs. Ah, bye. bye. All right, so um, I'm excited. I get to play some of my new songs. And this song's called Melt Away. I wrote it from like the perspective of alcohol, like a love song from alcohol. In the kind of like a dancey, fun, Ed sheeran style. I did my best. This is what I got for you. Everybody wants Get up and dance, all we want to do is lose control Spend a little of your time and just focus on me I'll make you feel like you want some more There's no reason to negotiate, just celebrate Enjoying how far we come And what I'm feeling is a vibe and I won't stop this ride So just let go and have some fun Hands up since we moved up And tonight we're gonna take some shots We put our hands up since we moved up Tonight we're going straight to the top You need me, come find me I'll take all your cares away I finally feel something So let's not waste another day Let it all melt away Everybody want to take a real chance And help make this moment last 
so much life can be lived in one single night Tomorrow's already in the past You can believe in you and me This may not be destiny But it could damn sure be fun So raise it up just in case There's no time to waste And it's okay if it's not love We put our hands up since we moved up And tonight we're gonna take some shots You put your hands up since you moved up And tonight we're going straight to the top You need me Find me, I'll help take all your cares away. I finally feel something, so let's not waste another day. Let it all melt away. This next song is called Heroes, and I wrote this last November when everybody was arguing about politics. I felt, I'm a people person, so I felt like it was very stressful and contentious, and you saw people on social media like cutting people out of their lives uh, for an argument which basically boiled down to essentially like, my old white guy is better than your old white guy, you know? And it was upsetting to me, and I realized, you know what? Like, we can't keep waiting for a savior to come and save us, right? We have to take care of each other. This is all we've got. It's right here, right now. And what are we leaving behind, you know? So that's what this song's about. It's called Heroes. Legacy. 
focus on all the wrong things So we can't be friends There's still time for laughing There's still time for play There's good reason for loving each other And not acting our age We're all just hoping, holding our breath Waiting to save our lives Heroes are like the movies and nobody's coming this time You may feel like you want to run away Who else gonna come here to save the day We can all be the hero in our history and forget it's all right, just agree. It's a simple love plan to try and understand that we can leave behind a legacy. A legacy. So this is a song I wrote like a month ago that's a true story that everyone likes except my mom. My mom hates this song just because the content is true and it goes like this. Time may be fading and I can't be everything to everyone in your life I should be wasted On top of everything else I just don't care tonight And will never love somebody As much as you love yourself And I was fine until you walked in this party I've forgotten how it felt when you said you were better with me Now we know it's all for show and there was nothing I could see So tonight I'm gonna hook up with your friend To everyone that plays their part Mending a broken heart Can I get an amen? Mm. I tried resistance but there was something in your eyes that made us more than friends. I'm at my limit. Now there's nothing you could say to make me jump in again. And yes, you cheated. On my love and on yourself and what it's all about. Not what you needed. But that's okay in the end. Cause you're missing out And you will never love somebody As much as you love yourself And I was fine until you walked in this party I forgot how it felt When you say you were better with me Now we know it's all for show And it was nothing I could see Tonight I'm gonna hook up with your friend To everyone down on their luck They just don't give a fuck Can I get an amen? Amen Amen Yeah, you love yourself And I was fine until you walked in this party Forgotten how it felt When you say you were better with me Now we know it's all for 
show and it was nothing I could see. So tonight I'm gonna hook up with your friend. To everyone that plays their part, man, in a broken heart, can I get an amen? I was finally doing okay. Please take me Everyone down on their luck that just don't give a fuck. To everyone down on their luck that just don't give a fuck. To everyone down on their luck that just don't give a fuck. Can I get an amen? Uh, so this last song that I'm playing for you guys. It's it's like my anthem. It's become my thing. Um, it's just about how next year could be better than this one. It's hopeful. Obviously, I wrote it during the pandemic, but it could be so beyond that. It goes like this. Dry your tears, don't you cry Everything's gonna be alright Standing strong for you and me Not what we want, but what we need. Maybe next year everything is gonna change. This time be glad that nothing stays the same. Maybe next year. Maybe next year You know too many that lost the time You lost yourself held down inside Sometimes you can't Be glad that nothing stays the same Maybe next year Maybe next year Next year everything is gonna change 
time be glad that nothing stays the same maybe next year 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 Thank you. I want to thank House of R for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. Make sure you click the link down below so that you can get all his social media and uh, keep track of what he's doing. You'll hear all sorts of cool stuff at his shows, but make sure you pay attention to the original stuff. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it would really make a difference. Please click down there. Don't forget to ring the bell if you want to help out the channel in any way, whether it's merch, room6.shop, or Patreon, buy one of my CDs, whatever. There's a link down there as well. And if you want to be on the channel, reviewed, interviewed, or both, hey, you can be like him. Click the link for my email address. Um, other than that, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Bye. Thank you. You're the first person to not do something when I do that.